my vision for the roost when we first opened up was being Chicago's really only source for great chicken and biscuits. Chicago has a great tradition of fried chicken and it's a very solid Midwestern style, but it's considerably different than what I was familiar with growing up and what is sort of ubiquitous at restaurants in the Southeast. Like a chicken biscuit sandwich is standard on most breakfast menus there. Chicago was brutal when we first got started with food trucks. I mean, it's it's a very different landscape than it is now. Couldn't cook on board. You know, there was only 40 or so trucks out. Now, not that the law isn't enforced, but the law is much better understood by everybody. And so there's not as much friction with the authorities. On the flip side, there's five times as many trucks out there. So it's, it's a much more challenging business. I really am happy that I went the food truck route before the restaurant route. I feel like it teaches you how to be scrappy and how to stretch a dollar and really gives you an opportunity to prove your concept, which I think a lot of restaurants open up with grand schemes and ideas. It's like the homemade pizza company strategy where they just, they got a ton of money, opened a million places, and people just don't want to go cook their own pizza and they don't exist anymore. Working capital when you're opening up a food truck uh, very much depends on the kind of concept you have and how many people you want to have helping you and how hard you want to go out the gate. If you're going to go breakfast, lunch, and dinner with four people on staff starting day one, then you need 80 hundred thousand dollars in the bank to handle that kind of business at minimum and and that's really if you're being smart with your pennies we have made an extremely uh, deliberate effort to keep our menu simple never gonna have more than six sides never gonna have more than two desserts on the menu for a couple reasons so one we're, we're a small restaurant and we're, we're casual and we want to be really really great at the handful of things that we do i think that's sorely lacking in a, a lot of restaurants um, and particularly when you're small it's a lot easier to teach somebody how to make five things perfect than 20 things really well um, so our our staffing our training it is simpler that way. Our food costs obviously are lower because we don't have as many products. And we can really spend a lot of time working with our guys on how to make the perfect biscuit. While our menu is short and our ingredient list is small, there's a tremendous amount of technique that we put, that goes into each one of our menu items. And it takes months for somebody to learn how to make a really good biscuit. And like to this day, I, I always joke with these guys, but not really, that there's like four people that work here that make a, a perfect biscuit consistently. Um, and we have almost 30 people now. Butter. <laughs> uh, butter is in everything. Uh, two pounds of butter in a batch of biscuits. Like, so two pounds of butter in 40 biscuits. We use a ton of buttermilk. Um, buttermilk biscuits, buttermilk brine for the chicken. All of our chickens been in a buttermilk brine for 24 hours before we fry anything. Our biscuits are scratch made, buttermilk biscuits. I mean, that's all we really use it for, but that's, that's the foundation of our menu. We go through about 45 gallons of buttermilk a week. I guess the only like, quirky thing about our menu is our, our breakfast sandwiches are all named for ladies and all those ladies are my ex-girlfriends. That's really, I mean, there's no trick to what they are or anything like that. It just happens to be what's going on. Yeah. Awesome. My wife's family loved that, my current, my now wife, when they heard about that. In Nashville, there's a place called Prince's and Prince's 80 years ago, so this guy, something, I can't remember his name, first name, but something Prince, his girlfriend was upset with him running around town at night uh, and made this insanely hot version of chicken 
gave it to him as a punishment. He loved it. He loved it so much that he decided to start a restaurant based on it. And the rest, I guess, is history. Like Prince's now has been a staple in Nashville forever. There's a ton of restaurants that do various versions of Nashville hot chicken. Um, and style-wise, the difference is this wet rub that goes on the chicken after, the, after it's fried, um, which is like a, a slurry, like a paste almost, oil-based, like a ground pepper paste that gets rubbed onto the chicken after it's fried. It's a nice addition to our business, and it gives us a little extra income um, without a whole lot of effort. It is 100% accomplishing the mission of supplementing our, our income here. Thank you.